Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Greg F and Patricia C. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up, there are a few headlines out there that are subtly implying that Tesla may be rigging its crash test data. All of these are stemming from this one tweet from Green the Only. Basically, he found some stuff in Tesla's code, potentially implying different custom settings for these different testing agencies. To be clear, Green is not making any allegations of Tesla cheating. That's just being made up by whoever is reading this news. However, a representative from ANCAP has said, we are aware of the claims made on Twitter and are looking into it. I'm only sharing this to tell you that there are a thousand and one different reasons that Tesla could have this special code in the software for these testing agencies and none of them have to be nefarious, but as always, we'll wait for the full story to come out. Next up, just a fun fact, Leo Koguan, one of the largest Tesla shareholders, has increased his stake in Tesla stock by over 100,000 shares to 22.7 million total, or around $6.6 .6 billion. So on behalf of all of the Tesla shareholders to Leo, here we have the rest of the comments from Martin Vieca from the Goldman Sachs conference yesterday. I did tweet this out, but I wanna cover it for anybody that missed it. So he said, the most important metric to watch in the years to come in the EV space, the per vehicle cost of manufacturing. On that note, in 2017, it cost Tesla $84,000 to make each car on average. That's now down to 36,000 per vehicle in recent quarters. Almost none of those savings came from cheaper batteries. Most of those savings actually came from better vehicle design to make manufacturing as easy as possible and new factory design. No surprise here, but as these new factories ramp up production, they expect to be able to make each car for less than $36,000. This right here is important to note because Martin actually chimed in on these comments. So he said, Tesla eventually wants a more affordable car. I think everybody knows this, whether it's a robo taxi or a dedicated regular car car, but he said Tesla needs a cheaper offering before its company operated robo taxi service comes out. He added demand for the three and Y has been stronger than expected. So that reduces the need for a new model anytime soon. Model Y will basically next year become the best selling vehicle of any kind of all time in the world. In response to Gary Black mentioning Martin actually recognizing the need for Tesla to have an affordable compact EV before launching Tesla's robo taxi. Martin Vieca chimed in and said this, I never said anything about prior to 2024 RoboTaxi platform rollout. So for me, I interpret this tweet to mean that a cheaper Tesla separate from the RoboTaxi coming before the RoboTaxi is definitely not likely. And secondarily, this tweet seems to confirm a 2024 RoboTaxi platform rollout. Based on that tweet from Martin, I think it's safe to say that this highlighted line from Business Insider is inaccurate. Based on all of the data points we have, I'm expecting Tesla's RoboTaxi unveil or rollout sometime in 2024 and a cheaper, new Tesla model, if it does happen, would be sometime after that. Moving on, some sources have shared some information with me. Now, I can't tell you who said this, but I am able to read the quote and you'll understand what's going on. It says, team, one of the great strengths of Tesla is that we are nimble and we quickly adapt to the situation at hand. Right now, there's an enormous opportunity in the recent Inflation Reduction Act, which brings us a huge benefit if we can rapidly grow cell production in the USA. To do so, we will be accelerating the Texas Gigafactory using every resource at our disposal. We have people, equipment, and supply chain resources currently lined up to ramp cell production in Berlin, some of which can be redirected to supercharge the production ramp in Texas in exchange for a temporary delay in the Berlin ramp. Clearly, internally, the Tesla team is already repositioning to take advantage of this enormous opportunity that the Inflation Reduction Act provides. The IRA already has enough incentive for Tesla to opt for a temporary delay in the ramp at Giga Berlin to supercharge the production at Giga Austin. So definitely exciting for the 4680 cell production ramp at Giga Austin and to everybody closer to Giga Berlin, I would just remind you that although there may be delays there for cell production, you will get some of the learnings that are coming from this Austin ramp first. 
Moving on, we've talked about this one a few times in the past, but it looks like with the dot 28 update, the alternate routes feature will be coming to Tesla's in the United States. Not every destination you plug in will give you two or three routes, but some will, so just be on the lookout for this in the coming weeks and months. So for me, life is just more enjoyable when I focus on gratitude and enjoying the little things. Fresh air, sunlight, a coffee first thing in the morning. If you enjoy coffee and you're still getting yours from a big box retail store, I have something that I think you should check out. Trade Coffee is the sponsor of this video, but Ashley and I have enjoyed Trade Now dating back to last year. Their team of experts taste test hundreds of different coffees across the United States every month to curate over 450 of the best that make the cut. I actually got to work with Trade recently to create my own custom collection, which was really enjoyable as I got to learn more about these small business owners that are actually making these different coffees. So if you're like me and you enjoy your coffee black, but with a little flavor and a zest to it, you can check out my personal collection. If not, no worries, Trade will undoubtedly have whatever it is you actually prefer. You can also shop by their most popular coffees or you can sort by roast or flavor profile. You can also take a custom coffee quiz and have a trade expert match you up to a coffee for you. If you'd like to support small business and brew quite possibly the best cup of coffee you've ever made at home, it's probably time to check out Trade Coffee. Right now, Trade is offering our audience $30 off your first order plus free shipping. So that's drinktrade.com slash electrified for $30 off, linked below. This afternoon, Green the Only said it looks like the new Tesla Radar has made an appearance on the Tesla Electronic Parts Catalog and that the Model S has it as well, showing this image from the Model X. Looking at the parts catalog for the Model X, Green the Only is saying that this number one would be the new Tesla Radar, number two is a new bracket, and number three down here would be the old version of the Tesla Radar. For what it's worth, Green the Only said yes, he thinks this new Tesla Radar will be back with Hardware 4. Back in June, Not A Tesla App did say Tesla registered a new high resolution radar unit with the FCC. They also shared this image from the filing. At the very least, something to watch. Next up, last night, Nautius Maximus said, the residual value of gasoline cars bought today will be much lower than people think. Yes, that tweet was from Elon and shout out to James for informing people like myself that that reference on Elon's Twitter handle is from a Monty Python film, Life of Brian. Elon was also asked about an update for the Steam integration, the gaming platform where you can play all of these games on Steam in a Tesla. He said, I'm testing it today in Palo Alto. Here we have a quick update on Tesla's brand loyalty through the first half of the year, setting record high brand loyalty rates and has significant brand loyalty among Model 3 owners. Tesla's June loyalty of 67.5% was almost 17 percentage points ahead of luxury runner-up Mercedes-Benz. Just think of brand loyalty as the likelihood that a Tesla customer would come back in the future and buy another Tesla, and of course, the same for all of the other brands. The average in the industry in the luxury market is 46%, once again for the first half of this year. Tesla sitting at 68%. Not only are an unprecedented number of households acquiring a Tesla, but a high proportion of these owners are sufficiently happy with their vehicles to acquire another one, creating a challenging situation for the rest of the industry. Next up, I thought this was a good reminder from Martin Vieca. He said, some people say, I don't need a new car. My 14 year old, whatever car works just fine. Vehicle safety changes beyond recognition in a 14 year time frame. Quote tweeting this from Tim Urban saying, the same crash that would have instantly killed someone in a 1959 causes a few light injuries today. Of course, these vehicles are 50 years apart, so a bit more of an extreme example. However, you get the picture. One of you in the comments yesterday asked for a snapshot of the Norwegian auto market just because they're leading the way with this EV revolution to try to see what demand could look like in the United States markets once we catch up. Now remember, a lot of vehicles that are available there aren't available in the US and vice versa, 
and the vehicles that are available are of course changing very rapidly. With that, this column right here, these are the numbers for the Norwegian auto market for the full year of 2021. Of course, Model 3, the best-selling vehicle by a significant margin, Tesla Model Y down in the fourth slot, but give it more time with availability, and you know it'll creep up this list. The only car notably on this list that's not a full BEV, the Toyota RAV4. Here we have the audio from the GM and Cruise tech conference yesterday. I did listen through it and here are the main takeaways. Before I get into it, I know not everyone is the biggest fan of GM, but when it comes to Cruise, just think of all of the elderly people that this service could really help, giving them some level of autonomy back to go out and run errands and do things on their own, or the people that can't afford a car, this service really can help a lot of people. Not to mention, hopefully, saving lives and making roads safer. Cruise is aiming for personal autonomous vehicle ownership by mid-decade. Right now, there are around 70 Cruise vehicles operating in San Francisco, and they're looking to double or triple that number by the end of the year. Cruise's main challenge right now is scaling. This is where the Origin comes in and they're targeting a 1 million mile lifetime for this vehicle. They're currently being tested on closed courses. Cruise does have low cost robots that are supposed to attach to any charger and robots to also clean these AVs, autonomous vehicles. Cruise is building sensors in-house and they're actually in AVs right now. They're also building chips in-house. These will go live first in 2025. This is when personal ownership could be viable. Kyle Vogt, the CEO of Cruise, said that the software Cruise wrote to work in San Francisco should also work elsewhere. Getting up and running in San Francisco for Cruise was a 100 out of 100 on the difficulty scale, but Kyle said expanding to other markets will be a two or three on that same scale. It took Cruise 33 months to get permits for San Francisco. It then took them three weeks for their next city. Cruise has pulled ahead their expansion schedule by six months. They're now planning to go live in Phoenix and Austin in the next 90 days. In these new markets, they will have driverless rides generating revenue, and to start, it will be on a small scale with ramped operations next year. In Austin, they're going from no footprint, meaning no maps, to the first revenue generating driverless rides in 90 days. Cruise is still planning to roll out thousands of the Origin AVs in 2023, and they're aiming for $1 billion in annual revenue by 2025. Perhaps most importantly, Kyle Vogt said over time, reliance on maps for Cruise is becoming a nice to have more than a need to have. If you're wondering what's going on with the markets today, much of it being driven by the inflation report, it just came in hotter than people were expecting. Forecasters were expecting a negative month over month. It came in positive 0.1. The headline year over year change came in at 8.3. Most analysts were expecting 8.1. This means the likelihood of a 75 basis point rate hike at the September meeting has gone up. It now sits at 80%. Right now, the current target Fed funds rate is 225 to 250 basis points, and this 80% probability would take us to 300 to 325. This line implies a 50 basis point rate hike. This is 75, and this would be 100 or 1%. One week ago, this is what the probabilities looked like. Fast forward to now, and the chances of a 50 basis point rate hike have gone to zero, and the chances of a 100 basis point rate hike have moved from zero up to 20%. What most people actually care about though, Tesla stock is actually holding up very well in this environment. On a day like today, with the S&P and the NASDAQ both down around 4%, ordinarily Tesla stock with a beta of two, it could be down, you know, eight, nine, 10% easily, but so far today at least, it's only down around three and a half percent. Last up for today, Speedcast has won the first contract with Starlink to become a reseller to actually sell this service to maritime and enterprise companies. There's a high barrier to entry to serve these energy customers in particular, and this distribution deal is one way for SpaceX to break into that market. The leader of Speedcast said, our mission is to bring bandwidth to these sites and to make sure they work all the time. So this should definitely help Starlink break into this industry that's apparently somewhat tough to get into. Don't forget, check out Trade Coffee linked below. Take advantage of that $30 off and free shipping. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.